Hello? That's loud. Sorry. Got to get used to where to hold the mic. I'm Ms. McGuire. Welcome to Mill Creek Senior Parent Night. I am one of the counselors here at Mill Creek. If your student's last name begins with letters P-O-L through S-T-I, I'm your girl. I've been with your kid for four years now. And um, another counselor is going to be helping me out tonight, Ms. Griffin. She's out there handing out packets right now. And we have Mr. Hal Wilkinson from the Georgia Student Finance Commission that will talk to you guys about financial aid. And we have, I'm sorry, what was your name again? Elizabeth Umberger from Georgia Gwinnett to also talk about financial aid and the hope and the zeal. So I'm going to get started right on time because there, there are three of us and I want to make sure that I get in everything I'm supposed to get in. Okay, so um, this is, uh, the first few slides here are going to be information from the senior sponsors, Jody Gross, Marissa Berry Covert, Elizabeth Summerlin, and um, Andrew Holbrook. So this is a little bit of good information for you guys as parents of seniors moving throughout the year. Um, the MCHS webpage is where you can find all the information. I hope that you guys are used to looking there first for information. Um, it's almost always on the website. Then um, this shows you what to do. Parents, students, then senior class information and all those various topics are covered. So who are the senior sponsors? I just mentioned their name, but this is, and this is all in your packet too. So when you guys have questions about things like dues or senior week or graduation tickets or whatever, this is the contact for the people that will help you with those questions, um, the go-to people. Of course, you know, the counselors will always help you, but we're just gonna go to these, <laughs> these same people. Um, their emails are in your packet, and I actually, right there where it says Balfour, right there, that's supposed to say Scholastic Images, I'm sorry, I should have caught that, but we don't use Balfour anymore, we use Scholastic Images for graduation announcements, senior rings, letter jackets, more information coming up. Okay, so senior dues, um, what do they cover? There, there it's listed. Um, when do they do? It's cheapest if you pay sooner, obviously. There is the pay scale, the pay rating. Um, you pay them through Scholastic Images online and the website is shown for, uh, further into the God, presentation. I need a Coke, something. Okay, so Scholastic Images, they're gonna come to campus and this would be a great time for you guys to order um, class rings, letterman jackets, or um, invitations to graduation. Do you have to get them? No. I mean, I know a lot of families that have ordered invitations to graduation through um, Vistaprint or any of the online cute little graphic places where you can make it yourself and it's not um, very formal with the old English lettering. But um, this is, if you're a traditional and you like that look, this is a great place to go. These are the dates that Scholastic will be on campus. They'll be in the cafeteria. So if your kid wants to do, um, get the ring or the jacket or look at the invitations, these will be days that they can do that. And, I hope they come prepared to put a down payment on whatever they decide on. Oh, I'm going to go back. See that last one down there, April 19th? The cap and gowns are delivered to Mill Creek on April 19th, and then they will be given out to the students on that day. All right, so the senior parent meeting with the senior class sponsor won't be until next semester. I hope everybody is on um, the web, not the website, but the email from Jody Gross that all of you guys should be getting emails from the senior sponsors. If you're not, her, her email's in here, please email her and say, I need to get on the senior parent email listing so you can get all the pertinent information sent to you. Um, what she's gonna talk about are those various things right there. One thing they do at the beginning of every year is they'll have an ice cream social, and it is scheduled for November 5th. It'll be right before the end of school, like the last 15 or 20 minutes. And they also combine it as a way to do service for the community, and they ask that kids bring four non-perishable food items because this is right before um, Thanksgiving, and we do have a, a big population in our community that relies on the Hamilton Mill Food Pantry and, um, and the donations that our school gives to them. So tell your kid to bring four cans in, um, and they can come to the ice cream social. Senior week. Um, senior week is a time of year in April. I haven't determined the actual date yet, but it's just a lot of fun where the kids get to really celebrate the culmination of basically 13 years of education. So there will be a carnival. There is a senior walk where the guys and girls get to wear their, their gowns and they walk all around the school and everybody's out in the halls cheering and clapping. They'll have um, a grilled lunch one day outside. They'll have 
bags of candy and gift cards delivered, and we'll get back to that too because they're going to want donations for the candy and the gift cards. But it is a great time to celebrate the seniors, and they look forward to the spring senior walk. It's always after spring break. Um, it's just a great tradition. And if you are going to send in candy, there's the information. You just send it in that says Betsy McGuire candy for senior week. That's, and they'll drop it in the front office, and that's fine. Okay, the information about who to contact. Again, this is in your packet, so you've got it right in your hands. No big deal. If you have questions about your kid's credit hours, like if there are oftentimes um, questions that come up at this time of year where a student will say, I'm in a junior home room and I'm supposed to be a senior. Well, that's because it's based on credit accumulation. So if a student does not have 17 credit hours at the beginning of this year, their, their fourth year in high school, they're not considered a senior until they finish getting 17 credit hours. If you have questions about that, your counselor can help you with that. Of course, attendance questions go to the attendance office, and the information is on the Mill Creek website. Okay, so now comes the portion that I'm going to talk to you about what, what the counselors have done for your students so far and what we are going to continue to do for this next year. So we do a lot with the kids on a um, reactive basis. In other words, when they come in crying or they're anxious or depressed or there's kid drama, friend drama, you know, grief or what have you. We do a lot of reactive stuff. We also do a lot of proactive stuff too, and this just outlines a few of them. For ninth graders, we sit with them and do a four-year plan so they have some idea of how they're gonna get to the finish line. We go over what the grad requirements are. There's something that the county mandates called the Teen Moors presentation. They've been exposed to this through elementary school and middle school, and we do it again in ninth grade. We do ninth grade parent night and individuals as needed. Tenth graders, going to be honest, there's a little bit of a lull with the 10th graders. We do career interest inventory with them. We do various program identification, like for scholarships and testing, and then um, individual as needed. With juniors, am I too loud? Is this too much? Does that sound okay? Okay, so with juniors, we meet with everybody and talk to them about the Georgia Futures website. We ask them to all set up an account through gafutures.org. And we'll talk a lot more about that and the benefits of having that account in just a minute. We do their junior conference, which we do in usually October, November, where we invite families in to sit down and come up with a plan to work towards graduation and how to angle yourself for a good lineup for taking off for your senior year. Uh, we have college and career fairs, still meeting with them on individual basis. And um, senior year, we really spend a lot of time with our seniors. We pretty, pretty much know their names and their, their past, pretty much. Um, we do their application for graduation, which is what we're doing right now. We just started it. Yes, no, today was our first day. And, and you guys don't have to do anything about the application for graduation. We pull the students into a group meeting um, in the media center as we were doing it this year. We just go over, yes, you're on track to graduate. These are the classes that you still need to graduate, but hey, you're in them right now, so you're doing great. If a student is behind, there might be a few notes in the notes section that say, don't forget, you've got to make up geometry semester two. Don't forget, because you need that for graduation. And we sign it, we send a copy home. And you guys don't have to sign it and send it back. We know that we've sat with the kid, and we are going to give them a copy. And we will be done with that by the end of this, by the end of September. Um, we talk, we do the senior presentation when we're also meeting with them, which is a little bit of the stuff that we're going to talk about tonight. We make sure that we say it to them, too, because, um, Kids, kids forget. I don't know if you've noticed that. Kids forget. Um, college and career stuff, we talk about financial aid, scholarships. We have a FAFSA night. So if anybody out there is, knows what the FAFSA is, you've either done it for yourself or you've done it for your older kids. Free application for federal student aid. The application opens up on October 1st for the, for the next year. So you'll be creating a financial aid packet for your student to begin college with next year. Um, go ahead and get started on it in October as fast as you can. If you get to a point where there, you have questions or you get stuck, we're having a FAFSA help night on October 26th where we invite everybody to come into the media center. Hal will be there, Elizabeth will probably be there. Uh, you said a Kent uh, Kennesaw guy is gonna be there. Um, we'll have a lot of different people to help answer questions for if you've got a, a, a funky situation like who, who gets to claim the kids? We're divorced or somebody's deceased or there's just all kinds of questions that can throw wrinkles into that process. So come with us that night and finish the FAFSA. Um, we do recommendation letters and uh, we still meet with the kids individually. All right, so let's talk about the SAT or the ACT. 
SATA and ACT has been null and void, right, for like the last year because of COVID. The colleges have said we can't ask kids to come and sit three and four and five hundred kids to a cafeteria and take this test elbow to elbow. It's too much of a risk. But those days are gone. <laughs> they want the SAT or the ACT again. So plan on it. Um, we want you to take the test. We urge the kids are t they should be taking it before December. The reason is because a lot of their deadlines, a, a lot of application deadlines are going to be before December. So hopefully they've already taken it. If not, don't worry about it. You've got time until August, September, October. Um, but you need to get on, on to them and, and make those plans to have them take the test. When you are signing up, or when your student is signing up to take the test, you might be thinking, well, how, how do the schools get my test scores? While you're in the process of signing up, you can choose up to four schools to send your test scores to for free. And I, I, I don't know about y'all, but that adds up. You'll get nickel and dime to death with senior year. So $15 or $12 or $15 per time, you just save $48, $60 if you just choose four schools that you want to send the test scores to right there. Everyone after four, you do have to pay a fee to have your, your um, scores sent. But I like to take advantage of the free stuff. And if you're ever thinking, like, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't want to send my scores. What if I bomb? Well, if you bomb, you're going to take it again, right? And you're going to send your scores again. And the colleges will keep your best representation. And the majority of the schools in the state of Georgia do something called super scoring. So what that means is if you send three sets of test scores in, um, they will cherry pick your very best sections. Oh, we did better on reading here, math here, writing here. Put it all together, that's your super score. So there's really no downside to going ahead and sending the scores while they're free. Um, let's see, gone to the super score. Don't forget to know the application deadlines. If anybody in here has a student that is really a high flyer, 4.0 type student that's looking to apply for early application or early admission, that deadline, I like to say just shoot for October 15th. There might be a few that are gonna be November 15th or maybe November 1st, but I, could, I couldn't list them all. So I would just rather tell you to shoot for October 15th for early application or early admission. And if you're thinking, I've never heard that before, or I don't know. The students that apply early action or early application are the ones that are going to probably be admitted based on their test scores and GPA. So much, not so much the um, the I made blankets for the needy, or I worked at the soup kitchen, or I was the captain of the football team. Those are great things, but the early application kids are going to be the, the really, really high flyers that maybe took eight or ten AP classes. They're going to get in based on the strength of their academics. Everybody else, go for regular decision, that's great. Or go ahead and apply early application because only one of three things can happen. You'll get accepted, you'll get deferred, or you'll get declined. Deferred just means we see you, we like you, but not just yet. Hang on a minute. We'll look at you again for regular decision. Okay. All right. Does everybody in here feel like their kid knows exactly where they want to go? They got it nailed down? Yeah. Some do, some don't, um, and, and with golly, it might change. It changes all the time. Those little slippery stinkers, they change everything all the time. So what, how are you supposed to know? Here's some ideas just to get, get it rolling in your head of how am I supposed to know, or the kid, how am I supposed to know where I want to go? Lots of different things to consider, but one is do I even meet the entrance requirements? Because you guys, if you're getting tons of stuff in your mailboxes right now, I mean, this happened to me. Um, Oh, my kid wants, the Hawaii wants my child. The University of Colorado wants my child. No, we took the SAT, and on the SAT they have a box that says, check here if you'd like more information, and we checked it. So we, we got the deluge in our box. They're not necessarily saying, hey, you're a perfect fit for our school. They're marketing, um, and they make money off of applications, and especially for students that have not done the legwork to figure out if they even could get into that school. So if your child has a one point, to GPA, they probably shouldn't spend the, the $80 to apply to Georgia because Georgia will take that money and say, no, all day long, that, that's a money maker. So just know what the admissions requirements are and if your child even remotely fits close to that. Um, do they have my major? True story, one of my friend's kids many years ago went to Georgia College on a long, long distance cross-country scholarship, but he wanted to be an engineer and he did, they, don't, they don't have engineering there. So, you know, he took two years with his scholarship money and he transferred to Kennesaw. But that, that if your kid wants to stay one place for four years, try to know a little bit about, about what they have there. And, and transferring is not a big deal. Tons of kids do it all the time. Transferring is easy and it's fine. I'm just saying if, if your student thinks they're going to go somewhere and make a home for four years, understand what kind of um, majors they have there. 
Uh, is your kid city, country? Do they care? Are they rah rah go dogs or do they care? Are they a theater kid? Does the school have a good theater program or do they care? These are just the questions to ask. Weather, one of my kids went to Georgia Southern, which is below the NAT line, if you know what I'm talking about. And you can't walk down there without collect, collecting gunk right here. It's disgusting, it's gross. So um, he, he made it, but I hated it, I never visited. All right, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna gather information. That's one way that you're gonna make this decision. Hopefully last year and maybe over the summer, you guys did some college visits. And I know it's gotten really strange with COVID about how to get on campus. If you can't do an actual college visit, then you can do a, um, a virtual one. And if you're, luck if you're not lucky, I don't, don't wanna say that, but if you have time and energy and you do the virtual one, I still think there's something valuable to just putting your feet on the actual campus. Even if you do the virtual tour, that's great, but stop and go, just get a cup of coffee or a Coke or something and just walk around. Wear your mask, watch the kids as they go to classes. There's something about the vibe of, of a college campus while the kids are all there and they're walking around doing their independent little thing. These little 18 year olds are just, it's fascinating. And your kid can get a, a feel for that too. Um, if you want to and you can take the actual visit, you just go to the school's website. You can even just Google visit Georgia Gwinnett or visit Kennesaw State and it'll take you directly to the registration pages. They're all free and you get you usually get a little swag bag of goodies. Plus you get to hear everything about the school because they're they're selling you. They're selling you a giant ticket item. So let them sell you. Hear everything they have to offer. Um, let's see. Colleges and majors again at GA Features. And we do have a college and career counselor. Her name is Ms. Vanderpool. So you can always um, call and schedule an appointment with her. She can talk about college admissions and college requirements and various scholarships. And she's also visited at several of the um, military academies. Um, yeah, the academies, not just the colleges. So if you're interested in, in that, she can be a good resource for that. So on your campus visit, try to at least take pictures. In the old days, we took notes, but nobody takes notes anymore. They take pictures on their phone or you take notes in your phone. But if you go to a couple of different campuses, why do you like this one, Junior? Take a picture of it. Why do you like this one, Junior? Take a picture. What does this meal plan have? What is this dorm situation? Can you bring your car to this campus? Because some schools will say, no, freshmen can't bring their car. You know, do you have to live in the dorm or do, can you get away with not living in the dorm? Um, just see more than the outside of the buildings. You know, you get to see inside the classrooms and inside the dorm rooms. You get to ask questions of professors if you get that chance. So if you get a chance to do something like that, there's nothing wrong with getting your, um, a transcript. It doesn't have to be official, just a copy of a transcript, because you could even try to go see the admissions office and you could get an instant acceptance if you come prepared like that. Everybody in your packet, y'all should have this little checklist if you're so inclined. I know I just said nobody takes notes, but we gave you one anyway. So for example, let's say your student is going to apply to one, two, three, four, five, six different schools. You can just fill out all this information. Did I do the application? Did I send the transcript? Do they need an essay or not? Did I send the test scores? So forth and so on, on down. Have I done the FAFSA? Whatever. Like note your ID and username because you don't have a ton of them. I know I always try to use the same one, but invariably they'll say it has to be 12 letters, not just 11, or they need a, a special punctuation piece. So just keep up with uh, how you're getting in. Okay, so when do they apply? Now is a great time. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing it now if you're ready. We always suggest that they apply before Thanksgiving, and that's for early application and regular decision, if your child is poised to do that. In other words, if your child is gonna try to apply to, let's say, Kennesaw, where the average kid that gets in there right now has about a 3.3 GPA, so let's say your student has a 3.3 GPA and they've already taken the SAT and that also looks good, right in the sweet spot for Kennesaw, go ahead and apply. There's nothing wrong with that. You can, the, Kennesaw has what's called a rolling admission decision. So that means you could apply today or junior could apply today and in like three weeks they'll get accepted and they'll find out, boom, put that decision to rest, you're done. Um, however, what if your student is on the cusp? What if um, this, your student has a 3.1 or 3.2 and you know that Kennesaw has a 3.3? You might want to wait until after first semester grades impact their GPA, right? Because if they can click up their GPA, a click or two. And again, with Kennesaw, the rolling admission, you can still safely apply in January and still get accepted for the next year. So some schools have a hard, fast deadline, like Georgia or Georgia Tech. Their deadline is January 1st. 
So I'm at what's called rolling admission, and I don't, I, I just, I can't memorize them all. You just gotta Google it or go to their website and look for application deadlines. Um, but if your student is positioned right now to get into the school they want to, go ahead and apply. We like to tell kids to apply to more than one school just because it's fun. You know, it's fun to get lots of acceptances. Plus, you need to have backup, um, just in case. Let's see. Don't forget about the application fees because that can, that can get pricey. I do want to say we are having Apply to College Day um, in October, and on that day we usually get a couple of schools, a couple of the local schools will waive their application fees like Georgia Gwinnett usually waives and University of North Georgia usually waives, and those can be really good um, safety schools for your students. They're, they're fantastic schools, but they're a little bit more open admission policy. So if you wanted to have your student apply with us on Apply to College Day when the fees are waived, you could consider that as well. This is a little bit about what I was talking about. Green Bay could have a safety net. So if your student wants to go to Georgia or Georgia Tech, that is fantastic. I'm lifelong Atlanta. I get it. I love that. But because I'm also a lifelong Atlanta, and I have seen Georgia go from the type of school that you could practically drive by in 29, and they throw a fish hook into you and go, come on, be a bulldog. And now it's like a public ivy. I mean, it's 4.0, 8 to 9 AP classes. The kids are making 1,400 on the SAT. It's gotten really, really difficult. So, little aside about that, if your student wants to go to UGA, and they don't fit that super duper high, high profile, let them start at a UNG or a GGC or Kennesaw, Georgia State, Georgia Southern, West Georgia, to transfer into the University of Georgia after a student has their first 30 credit hours, which is typically their first year, to transfer in the GPA requirement goes down to 3.3, and then after their first 60 credit hours, the GPA requirement goes down to 2.8. This is on the website, you just look under transfer students, that data is there for you. So you could exhale a little bit about what they're doing right now, get them graduated, hopefully get them the hope of the Zell, let them start one place and springboard into um, the school, the reach school, the school of their dreams. The matching schools are the ones that they fit right in that sweet spot, and then the um, safety schools are the ones that have a little bit more open admission policy. They're great schools, they just, they, they might be right in our community, and they try on purpose to be very, very accessible. Also, um, if you have questions, guys, all those um, admissions departments do have 1-800 numbers, and they, they get paid to answer our questions, so call them anytime. Okay, so what do I do? Do this and not that. Um, help your student choose a college that's right for him or her. I can't tell you how many times we, as counselors, sit in our office and hear the parents say, well, we're Yellow Jackets, so he's going to go to Tech, and the kid's going like that, or, or crying, or the, or the kid is like, I have a 3.0, I'm not going to Tech. And, and it's such a source of stress. There's gotta be a way to satisfy everybody. I'm just throwing things out there for consideration. Just, there's gotta be a way to satisfy everybody. This is a big financial investment and emotional investment and time investment. So just consider everything. Um, discuss your finances. Um, I've had kids think that they were gonna go to a certain school and then find out maybe they weren't even legal in this country. That's true. Um, and that changed everything for that student, or they, they didn't know that their family couldn't afford the, for them to go to Georgia or Georgia Tech. So it's better to have those conversations up front, as difficult as they may be. And if you have to have those conversations, reach out to me or any of us counselors or the financial aid department of any school or Ms. Vanderpool or college and career counselor here, because we've got lists and lists and lists of scholarship resources for you guys and tons and tons of resources, and how always helps us too. Mr. Wilkinson is an excellent resource for stuff like that. Okay, so what we're not gonna do is choose a college based on someone else's opinion. Do not follow the boyfriend, the girlfriend, the best friend. You are not gonna do that. That's not gonna last for four years. You're gonna make a decision based on what you like and what you want in your future. Um, don't choose a college based on rah, rah, I love the Bulldogs. I had a student um, many years ago, I knew the family well enough, she said, I want to go to Duke because, you know, we love the Blue Devils. I said, yeah, I know you love the Blue Devils. Well, what do you want to major in? She said, I want to be a special ed teacher. And she had like a 3.1. And I said, Taylor, so you're going to go out of state to, to, to Duke, you think, which you're not going to be able to get in, and pay out of pocket $70,000 a year. So you'll have a $280,000 student debt to get a special ed job that will start you out at $35,000 a year. 
that's not a good return on investment. Go to a community college right by Duke and then go to the basketball games and say, go Blue Devils. But just, you know, think about what, what you gotta do, Terry. And she ended up, of course, being in Georgia at Kennesaw. But don't pressure your student. This is not your journey, it's hard to hear. I've got three of them, and I, boy, have I learned that lesson the hard way. Not my journey. Okay, we already talked, excuse me, I already talked about the admission requirements. We already talked about that. One thing I wanted to point out is the recommendation letters. Some schools care, some schools don't. Georgia likes recommendation letters. Georgia Tech does not care. Kennesaw has told us they don't read recommendation letters. We will write them, that's fine, whether a school uses them or not. Sometimes families want them because it's good to have for scholarship applications. Um, lots and lots of times scholarships will need recommendation letters. And that, that's fine, we will, we will do that. So when, um, when you have to get a recommendation letter, it's usually best to get a recommendation letter from two teachers, N not necessarily a coach. A coach would be an, an augmented person, the two teachers that can speak to the, the student's performance in their class and what kind of an academic student they are. And believe it or not, for some reason, they always want a counselor um, recommendation. And, out of, I don't know, 480 counselors on my caseload, I bet I know maybe 150 good enough to know. I know your parents' names and I know, I know you. So how am I gonna help those other ones? I'm going to get them to fill out a, um, a recommendation request letter. And we have that in our office. It's basically just a brag sheet or give me your, your resume. Just, you know, give me some adjectives about you. What do your parents call you? What do your, what do your grandma, what does she say about you? What would your teacher say about you? What can I work into a really nice letter? Because I can, I can get it all in there. You know, Junior works at Equine Therapy, and he also works at Chick-fil-A, and is the president of the debate club. I can get all that in there. So I just need that information, and we always ask if you can get it to the counselor uh, two weeks in advance, because we get jammed up. There's nothing worse than a kid that comes in and says on a Monday, I need this by today. The deadline's tomorrow. That's frustrating. And it doesn't give us time to do what we like to do, which is a really good, thorough recommendation letter. All right. Things that your student may face. I don't know about you guys, but the kids are freaking out. Have you guys noticed that? That the stress and the anxiety and the, the yo yo that we've been on with going from digital to face to face to digital to it's just it's just been so chaotic. Um, and then you add on senior year and the worries about that and their grades and their scholarships. It's, it's a lot. Uh, a lot of them are feeling overwhelmed all the time. Um, they just don't know where to begin. So we try to, that's why we like to do our apply to college. It's like, it's not that hard. A college application, just the basic application, you can do it in 15 minutes. It's not a big deal. And we can just check that off the list. And we, we'll give them a list. And we've, we've given you guys some lists, I think. But it's super easy, but we just have to go down methodically. Have you, have you applied? Did you send a recommendation? Have you sent your transcript? Have you sent your test scores? Good. Now we wait. Now we wait for a decision. And then once the decision comes in, then there's a whole other little checklist of things that we can, we can get them on board with. But we tell them, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Just one little bite, just one thing at a time. We'll do it. They're scared. Their life as they know it, their 18 years of life is about to change. That's, that's enough for a freak out right there. They're gonna have to move out. Even if it's under you know, the umbrella of parental love and support, they're gonna be moving out. They're gonna live in a dorm and have a bathroom with a bunch of other people. No wonder they're freaking out. There's so much going on. They're worried about the money. They're worried about if I'm getting into a certain college. So we just have to be patient with them. We do a lot of deep breathing. It's okay. Millions and millions of kids around the country do this every year. You can do it. You'll be fine. Okay, so this is, um, we, we just created a few slides here about the schools that are popular for our kids. This is the profile of the student that got into UGA. Um, you'll notice that it says 2020 applicants because last year's data was skewed so strangely, so we just kept the data from the year before. But I did um, include right there where it says detailed information, go to admissions.uga. Anytime you want first year profile information for any school, you can just Google Kennesaw State first year profile class of 2025 or freshman year 2021, whatever you want, and you'll get this, this data. That's crazy right there. That, that, those numbers are huge to me. Georgia Tech's very similar. Georgia Southern, um, great school. It's a research university. 
Is it a party school? Yeah. Have you ever been to Athens on a Saturday? Mm -hmm. That's just, that's not the school's fault. That's a bunch of kids that are away from home that are doing silly things. Is it a, still a great school? Yeah, it's a research university. My kid took a science class there from a professor that left Cal State because their science department is so good. Um, it's very affordable and they do have the big school feel. They've got the Greek life, they've got the football team, they've got tons of activities and clubs if your student is interested in that. It's a little, a little bit easier to get into than a UGA. They do have engineering there too. It's a great engineering feeder program for Georgia Tech if anybody wants to use that as a springboard for that Regents Engineering Pathway Program. This would be great for that. Georgia State, again, true Georgia native here, born in South Florida Hospital, which doesn't even exist anymore. But um, Georgia State has exploded on the scene. It is a phenomenal school. If you have kids that are interested in the media arts, they have a brand new media arts building down there. I think it's maybe three or four years old. And I know you've all heard that we're in the Hollywood of the South, right? Well, this place is a feeder for the Hollywood of the South with Pinewood Studios right there, and the kids are working on set if they want to. They, they've got so many opportunities down there. Plus, of course, the business school. It's just a really great, well-rounded school. They have something called the Panther Predictor that you can go in and figure out if your kiddos is a good fit or not, and should I even think about spending the application fee to apply there. Also, another thing, I want to take a minute and point this out. They have something called the Perimeter Campus of Georgia State. So, if you've lived here you know, a long, long time, you might remember DeKalb Community College, which morphed into just Perimeter College. That Now it's been absorbed by Georgia State, and they call it the Georgia State Perimeter Campus. The Perimeter Campus has different locations all around town, over at you know, Perimeter Mall and over in DeKalb County, tons of different campuses. So if your student maybe has not been their very best academic self in high school, but no big deal, they're not done yet, they're kids. And they're, gonna, they're getting better all the time, we hope, but if they, they want to go to college, tell them to go there and start at a Georgia State at the Perimeter Campus, and then they can funnel straight down to the, to the downtown campus after one year. Okay, Georgia Gwinnett, where my friend is from, right in our backyard, it is a beautiful campus. They have 45, that have, are those numbers still the same, right? I haven't looked at this since July. Okay, there we go, what's it say? Okay, 45 concentrations, 17 bachelor programs. It's getting bigger every day, it's right down the road. Um, they have varsity sports. It's, it's a, the best bang for your buck. If you have a student that's getting the Hope Scholarship or the Zell, that's their tuition. If, if a kid's getting the Zell Miller Scholarship, that's 100% of tuition. There is no room and board, because that's mom and dad's house. So they could go to college for just a nominal fee, you know, to, to, or even to begin there, like we were saying, to begin there and then springboard into a, a UGA or a tech. It's a great school. All right, so some kids are like, I know I want to go on to college, or I want to, I need to go to learn something else, but I'm not sure that a four-year college is for me. That is a thousand percent for you. Don't have to go to college to have a great, phenomenal adult life. You don't. There's many, many different ways for a kid to get to their adult life and, and be content, which is what I, my middle son quit college and was like, I don't care. You don't have to go to college. You, you need to figure out how to pay for your life and be somewhat content. But I don't care if you if you go to college. And, and this is where our technical colleges and the technical college system of Georgia come in. Phenomenal opportunities at the TCSG. We have um, Gwinnett Tech is right down the road. Of course, there's Athens Tech, Lanier Tech, Chattahoochee Tech. There's like 17 or so different technical schools all around the state with a wide variety of, of options of degrees and programs and certificates. You can even use a technical school for the kids' core classes. Like again, I go back to those kids who maybe weren't their best academic self here in, in high school. And their GPAs might be a little bit wonky right now, but they know I'm getting better, I'm getting smarter, I want to do things. Let them start here and get their, their core classes out of the way. Or conversely, what if they wanted to do something like automotive technology or aviation technology? welding, computer programming, um, logistics, the movie production and set design is offered there, and they also work with Pinewood Studios and put kids on sets all the time. Um, I already said welding, practical nursing. These right here are free tuition, you guys. They're under the HOPE grant, the HOPE Career Grant. Isn't that what it's called now? The HOPE Career Grant. So you've heard of the HOPE Scholarship. That's for four-year schools. The HOPE Grant is for two, these programs right here. So I just focus on that welding because I tried to get that kid that quit college, I tried to get him to go to welding. 
And he was like, I'm not sure I want to be a welder till I'm 60. And I was like, well, babe, you also don't want to sling pizza till you're 60, which is what you're doing now. So why don't you take this year, year and a half, and go get this, and you'll get out, and you'll have a certificate. You'll be making 40 or 50 or $60,000 a year while you wait for that lightning strike to hit your soul to tell you, well, what do I want to do with my life? You'll make some decent money if you get an apartment. These are great opportunities. All right, so uh, let's see. You have finalized the application. So that means you've sent it off, you've sent the test scores, you've sent the tran transcripts, you're just waiting. Um, the transcripts, all right, I'm gonna skip ahead. All right, so what happens now is you gotta request a formal transcript, okay? The counselors are um, part of that process. However, caveat, we don't just randomly say, okay, every, I'm, I'm applying to college. Somebody has to tell us which avenue we're supposed to send the transcript through. We, we do some electronically. We are not allowed to email transcripts. It's against the county policy. It's not considered a secure portal. So we can't just email a transcript. There are three typical ways that we will help with, with sending transcripts. Number one that I want you to know about and is free. That one right there, Georgia Futures. Again, the best website in the state for college health. GA Futures. You're gonna go to your account there. You're gonna follow those directions, go to the college planning tab, go to the application and transcript tab, scroll down, find the kids' school, Kennesaw, GGC, Gwinnett Tech, Georgia Southern, West Georgia. You can send as many as you want to schools in the state of Georgia for free, secure, and immediate. Boom, you just hit send and they're gone, okay? Those are for all the Georgia schools. So what if your kid wants to go to Alabama or Kentucky or Texas or you know Oregon or some other place? Well, we, as a school, have accounts with two electronic transcripts sending portals, platforms. One is called SendEDU, and the other one is the Common App, Common Application. So if you say to us, hey, send his transcript through Parchment, well, guess what, Mill Creek doesn't use Parchment. We don't have an account with Parchment. We only use those two, okay? Um, so if, if your school is, if your application is being funneled through a place like um, Common Application, You'll, you'll know it, and you just let, you just order one transcript on My Payments Plus, you just order it, and you say it's gonna be electronic, and we'll send as many electronic transcripts as we can for that one $5 fee, that's fine. If you use the common app and you apply to a dozen schools, we'll send a dozen transcripts for that one $5 fee, but it's $5 like per service. Georgia Futures is free, common, ED, common app is one service, so if you have some schools for that, that's one $5 fee. If there's a Send EDU app, that's another $5 fee. But let's go back to Alabama. They don't use any of that. So you gotta do it the old school way and order a paper application. Um, and that is that last box right there, the paper transcript. So it takes about two days because there are several different people involved that have to touch it, sign it, stamp it, seal it, all that rigmarole. And then your kid comes to our office and just comes up and says, hey, I'm here to pick up my transcript. And our sweet secretary goes, boom, hands her the envelope, it's sealed envelope, marked stamped, don't open it because that devalues it, de de validates it, and you guys send it, because we don't send it, because in the past there have been times when we said, well, we sent your transcript, and the family gets mad because they're like, well, they didn't get it. We don't, we don't, we don't want to get caught up in that snarling little mess. We get, we'll be glad to give it to you guys, and you can send it. Okay, so any, each paper transcript is $5. All right, actually, let me go back. So we're gonna talk a minute about that Georgia Futures. I cannot stress enough, see that thing in red right there? This is add your social security number. If you guys, if your kid doesn't have a Georgia Futures account, they should, but if they don't, set one up, and in their profile, please, please, please make sure that their social security number is included. I know we're all told over and over again to guard that, guard it, because of um, identity theft and so forth. This is a, a state website, and it speaks to our system. And the way that the Georgia Student Finance Commission will validate your student's GPA at the end of the year so that you can get your Hope Scholarship money or your Zell Miller Scholarship money, the way that they do that is they use that social security number as, as the uh, entry point. So if we don't have your social security number on file here at Mill Creek, and if it's not also in your Georgia Futures account, you won't get that money. And guys, we don't work in the summer, so there's nothing sadder than to come in on August 5th and there's all these emails and voicemails from parents that say, I didn't get my hope money. <laughs> Give us your social. You know, we've got we've got until the end of the year, but that is key. If your kid's gonna get the hope for the Zell, we, 
we got to make sure that we have it on file with us, and it has to be in the Georgia Student <coughs> Finance Commission's website, GA Futures. All right, we talked about that. Oh, final transcripts. So at the end of the year, you guys, your schools are going to want final transcripts. We don't automatically send those out because there's, you know, like a thousand seniors. We, there's no way we know where everybody's going. But it's, the onus is on the kid or, or you guys to order the final transcript. The directions are right there. You just go through My Payments Plus. You pay the one five dollar fee. The final transcripts are ready usually around June 10th. So yes, that means that we won't be here. The secretaries in the front office are here, and they'll have a huge box of final transcripts, and your student can come back and pick up their, their final transcript in the sealed envelope for them to take this home. How are we going to pay for this? Kidneys, eyes, liver, I don't know. It's expensive, but somehow we all do it. All of us, millions, for years and years, we've been making it happen. The best way is the FAFSA. Statistics show completion of the FAFSA ups the students' um, chances of actually attending the school. The FAFSA, free application for federal student aid. It's basically, I look at it as a family going, hey, government, this is who we are financially. What do we qualify for? And then they give you a bunch of offers. And you don't have to take the offers. You can say, no, 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 no. They're just offers. But that can also stand as your application for the HOPE or the Zell Miller Scholarship, just completing the FAFSA. If your family doesn't make enough money um, to meet certain levels of income, then you could qualify for what's called a Pell Grant. The Pell Grant is just free money. I went to college on a Pell Grant back in the day. Um, if anybody offers you a grant, that's free. You say, yes, please, I'll take every grant you can give me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, but that, that's the way the, the Pell Grant would come to you, is by completion of the FAFSA. And then other, your federal student loans will come to you through completion of the FAFSA, either the subsidized or the unsubsidized, and I'll let you guys talk about that. Um, Hope, Zell Miller scholarships, other scholarships, Somehow or other, we piece it together. Little by little, Grandma said, I'll buy you your school books. Little bit by little bit. Scholarships, um, I could go on and on about this. I won't, it's just right there. Google can be your friend. It can also overwhelm you. If you just Google scholarships, it's gonna rain on you like a hurricane. So, but if you Google specifically, like scholarships for left-handed people, scholarships for future lawyers, scholarships for future engineers, or movie production, you know, or whatever you want. There's a scholarship for just about everything. If you're atheist or Methodist or Catholic or any of that, there's a scholarship for it. You can Google 100 weirdest scholarships and you'll get, I'll let Hal tell you about it, the duct tape scholarship. Um, let's see. The Zell and the Hope. So these are the requirements for the Zell Miller Scholarship and the Hope Scholarship. So these are both funded by the Georgia Lottery. Um, the Zell Miller is the more, I don't know, financially beneficial because you get 100% of tuition. There's a few pieces to get the Zell though. You have to make a 3.7 GPA in, your ac in the kids' academic classes. So things like art, theater, chorus, weightlifting, doesn't count. The academics, you have to have a 3.7 combined with a certain test score in either the SAT or the ACT. You don't have to take both, but either one. And that has to be in one sitting because they will not super score for your Zell Miller award. Okay, so it's 1,200 in the SAT or a 26 on the ACT, which it's really not too, not too bad. It's pretty doable. Um, and what do you get? You get 100% of tuition at a public Georgia college and a portion of that if a student wanted to go to a private. So the safety net for the Zell is the HOPE, the HOPE scholarship. A little less rigorous. The student only has to get a 3.0 GPA in their academic classes. And there is no testing component, and the kid can get up to, I believe, up to 90% of tuition at an in-state public school. That's a pretty good safety net. Um, you have to qualify for the Zell as an immediate graduate from high school, but you can you can qualify for the Hope while you're actually in college. If you if you don't graduate from high school and get it after your freshman year, let's say you, you have that 3.0, you can pick up the Hope then. And how do you get the Hope? Going out in the FAFSA. Or the other thing is on the Georgia Student Finance website is GSF apps because there are families that are just like, I'm not pulling out the FAFSA. I'm not sharing my tax information. I, it's nobody's business. I'm not going to do it. However, I want my kid to get that scholarship money, which they're completely entitled to. And if that's the case, you don't have to do the FAFSA. You can do the GSF apps. It's the other, other way to get that, that scholarship money. OK, so to access your HOPE GPA, if you guys want to go through your kid's transcript and write 3, 4, 3, 4, you know, like an A is a 4, a B is a 3, and do all that math, that's fine. I think you should do it right this, this way. It's done for you. These are the directions to get your HOPE GPA report out of your um, student's GA Futures account. 
I do want to point out that if you go today and you set up your GA Futures account and you, you try to access that Hope GPA immediately, it's not going to be there. Um, how long does that usually take? It will be after the next semester's grades are put in December, right? So you won't be able to actually see that until January. But nevertheless, you can get the actual HOPE report and it will tell you exactly where your student is for the HOPE or the Zell Miller. And it does all the math for you, the taking out of the 10 AP points and so forth. Different websites for you guys. Um, I told you a little bit about Ms. Vanderpool and what she does. There it is again. <laughs> All right, so at the very end, what are you gonna do? Your kid was accepted, you've chosen a school, you're ready to go. Believe me, they're gonna tell you what to do next. As much as we push the kids from our side, eventually once the school has them in their sites, they'll pull them from their end and say, hey, we need your housing deposit. We need your in, you know, class deposit, academic deposit. We need you to sign up for a summer orientation and pick your classes. They'll, they'll tell them. So that, tell your kids to get used to checking their emails got to get used to checking emails. And also tell them to make a professional email instead of like, hello kitty123 at gmail, <laughs> something like that. Tell them to make a professional email account. All right, we have different social media accounts. And here we are, this is where we end up. Our little babies are about to go out the door. And I heard one time that God makes it so by the time they're ready to leave, we're ready to say goodbye, because the senior year is so strange. <laughs> so, all right, so we're going to do collective um, questions and answers at the end. So without any further ado, I'll let Ms. Sumberberg take over. I'm going to take just a moment and introduce myself while she's pulling up my um, presentation. I'm Elizabeth Sumberberg. I work in the financial aid office at Georgia Burnett College. I always tell my audience I've been in financial aid so long. <laughs> Everything was paper when I started out in financial aid. I also am a parent of, um, I've got a sophomore in college right now, and I have two that recently graduated and are on that career job search. So I've been through it on the parent end. I've been through it for years in the financial aid office. The information that I'm sharing is not uh, special to Georgia Gwinnett College. It is for all colleges and universities that a student may be wanting to attend. Um, I recently put my presentation together after having my summer with my students coming in, so a lot of things are fresh on my mind as what they can do to help themselves through the process. So without further ado, I'm going to get started, and let's talk a little bit about what you're going to experience in financial aid. We want to talk a little bit tonight about the sources of financial aid, what that application process is, the next steps, maintaining eligibility, because guess what? You can lose your eligibility for financial aid. Don't want to do that, so give you some um, helpful hints on how you start out on the right track. And then finally, what can I do right now? So on the sources of aid, <clears throat> there are federal, state, and private funds that are available to students and they apply for those. Um, it's not a guarantee that their education charges are going to be covered. They may be, they may not be, but at least it is your start to see what your child and what your family is eligible for in the different programs of financial aid. So the examples of financial aid programs are up here. You've got grants such as the Pell Grant or the Federal SEOG Grant. You have federal work-study programs. Sometimes you have even institutional work-study programs. I will give you a hint on work-study. If you're awarded work-study, those funds do not apply towards your institutional charges. Instead, it is a job, and you are paid as you submit your timesheets. So it is a wonderful way for a student to get a little bit of experience if they've never had a job. It's also a great way, parents, for your student to earn either commuting gas money or to earn some money that they can use for their own personal reasons if they're living on the campus. So work study is a wonderful thing. There are also the direct subsidized and unsubsidized loans. Those are for the students. There are the Hope and Zell Miller scholarships and grants. 
There are institutional scholarships, and then there are also private outside scholarships, such as you would find by working with the counseling staff here at Mill Creek or in your community as you become aware of scholarship opportunities there. Hmm. So, how do you apply to these things? The federal aid programs you're going to apply use, using the 2022-23 FAFSA. We've talked a little bit about that tonight. We'll talk just a little bit more about it. But um, I do want to encourage you to attend the Mill Creek FAFSA completion night. If you have not completed your FAFSA by that time, please come because there will be not only people that are willing to help you personally with it, but it is a great way to find out the do's and don'ts of filling out the FAFSA. If you're applying for the Hope and Zell Miller scholarships or grants, you can complete the FAFSA or you can complete the GSF apps application, which is at gafutures.org. Institutional scholarships, those are the ones that are available through the various colleges. You need to know what that application process is because it differs at every single college you're applying to, and you need to know the deadlines for those. Outside private scholarships are very similar. Those are going to differ based on the donor of the scholarship. You need to know the deadlines and what that application process is. So on most federal uh, programs, they are need-based, most of them are. That means that that eligibility is determined based on the family income and assets. Your scholarships are going to be more academic-based, and those are going to be predominantly uh, determined by the uh, grade point average and also the uh, test scores that the students submit. Every student does not qualify for every type of aid. So we always get that question, where's my Pell Grant? I'm looking at their eligibility going, you don't qualify for that. It is a need-based program and you didn't fit into the criteria for that. Or on the other hand, I get the students going, where's my HOPE? And I'm looking at them going, you know, your HOPE GPA is like a 2.8, so that doesn't quite qualify for it coming into college. So just be aware that every student doesn't qualify for every type of aid. Real quickly, just have a, a, cap, a recap of the Hope and Zell Miller and my friend Hal Wilkinson is going to give you a lot more in depth on that. <clears throat> the grants are for the diploma and the certificate programs at the technical colleges. The scholarships are for the degree programs at the colleges. And there are different criteria for the grants versus the scholarships. So you need to know what kind of school you're going to and what the criteria for those are. You can be eligible, this is also a question that comes up some, you can be eligible for the Zell Miller or you can be eligible for the HOPE, but you're not going to be eligible for both of them at the same time. You are not going to get both Zell Miller and HOPE at the same time. <clears throat> the HOPE eligibility, and this is key, can be achieved if you were not eligible out of high school. Zell Miller cannot. You have to have Zell Miller eligibility when you graduate high school, but for HOPE, if you get into college and you are not eligible, once you hit one of the regular checkpoints, which are basically the transitions between freshman, sophomore, sophomore, junior, and junior, senior year. If you've got that 3.0 HOPE GPA at that point in time, you can become HOPE eligible. And that's one of the things that I encourage the students that come to GGC to look at when they are not HOPE eligible out of high school because I have seen in our students, a number of our students become HOPE eligible. So I want to give that encouragement to students that it is very doable if you just apply yourself from the beginning. Another piece I want to point out is the state programs require for the male students selective service registration. Very recently, like in the last month, the Department of Ed decided that they were no longer going to require that even though it still is a question on the FAFSA. So for federal aid, you don't have to have that. 
But if you're going to apply for your Hope Brazil Millard, you've got to have that selective service registration. So you want to be aware of that if you are a young man. And finally, I want to really hit home on this again. Please set up your gafutures.org account if you haven't already done so. Monitor your scholarship eligibility. We will ask you at GGC if you come and say, I wonder if I'm Hope eligible, have you looked at your gafutures.org account? We want you to take the responsibility of monitoring some of your own eligibility. So the application process. First of all, apply early. Please apply early. I don't know how many times I can tell you apply early. Because in August, we had two hour waits to see students. And you know what every one of those students had in common? They did not apply early. They did not finish their requirements early. So don't come see us in August. Instead, be on campus enjoying all the activities for the freshmen by doing all your financial aid early. So the first thing is you want to create something called an FSA ID. This needs to be created for both the student and one parent. Parent, if you have created one for a previous student or for yourself as a student, you don't need to recreate or create a new one. You would be using the one you already have. But this, if this is your first student in college, then the parent, one parent and the student need to create an FSA ID. That is your login to the FAFSA and other federal um, websites. You want to submit the 2022-23 FAFSA, and it's going to be using 2020 tax information. So this is tax information that 99.9% .9 of everybody in this room should have already completed, because this was due last year. We also want you to complete the GSF apps for the HOPE and Zell Miller. We recommend that you complete both of them. Even though you're doing the FAFSA, go ahead and do the GSF apps too. You only have to do the GSF apps one time, but the FAFSA is an annual application, so you will be reapplying for all your federal aid every year. Let's look a little quicker at the, closer at the FSA ID. The FSA ID, this is so important. Your name needs to match how it appears on your social security card. Because if it does not, then you're going to have that extra requirement at your college to submit a copy of your social security card because we now have a name mismatch. So please, please, everything that you do, every document you complete, every application you complete, use your name as it appears on your social security card. Also, make sure your social security number is correct and your date of birth is correct. And while those are not two culprits that usually create problems, I have actually seen a wrong date of birth and I have seen uh, several wrong social security numbers. So just make sure your information matches up correctly and do keep a record of all of your logins, particularly that FSA ID because it is the world's worst thing to recreate. So hold on to it once you've created it. The FAFSA, again, is an annual application. And let's talk just a second about which parent is on the FAFSA. So if mom and dad are your biological parents or actually legally adopted parents, and they are together and married, those are the parents on your FAFSA. If mom and dad are your biological parents and live together but are not married, they are the people on your FAFSA. If mom and dad, your biological parents, are separated or divorced, then you are going to use the parent that provides over 51% of your care, which is usually the parent that you live with. Don't care who claims you on their taxes. It's the parent that provides the most support. If that parent has remarried and there is a step-parent in the family, then it is going to be that parent and the step-parent's information on your FAFSA. So it's going to be who you live with that is your legal or adoptive parent on the FAFSA. 
And then again, it's not going to be, it's going to be irregardless of who claims you on the taxes. If your parent has a significant other that lives in the household, but they are not married, that significant other never appears in the household size or on the FAFSA. So that is something that I know is really tricky, but that's exactly how you're looking at it. It's, it, it is the biological parents first, and then step parent if that biological parent has remarried. If your parent does not have a social security number, you want to put all zeros in when it requests that parent's social security number. And when you get to the error page, even though these are the instructions on the FAFSA, it will give you an error for that. You get through that by clicking twice where it says check errors. It'll move you right on through it. Students who have a break in their relationship with their parents, they are not talking to them, uh, the parents are nowhere to be found. They live with a person who maybe has custody of them, or maybe the person never had legal custody, but they've been raised by grandma or whatever. Those students need to con they need to fill out the FAFSA based on their own information, not the person that has custody. Custody doesn't count. No custodial person is going to put their information on the FAFSA. And then they will check a box that says they cannot provide parent information and they will need to work with the college financial aid office for special circumstances. Families, and this has happened a lot obviously because of COVID, but families who have a decrease in their income from the 2020 taxes that you're going to be supplying for the FAFSA, you will fill out the FAFSA with the 2020 income information, just like it's asked for, but then you need to contact the financial aid office to see if maybe you can qualify for a professional judgment where a more accurate picture of your finances can be looked at. And then finally, there is a section in on the FAFSA about status, and it asks if you've ever been awarded the court, an emancipated minor, in foster care, um, an orphan, maybe something else, can't think what else, but any of those questions, if you answer yes to them, you've got to have the documentation to support that. If you don't have the documentation, that is not your status. So just be very careful when completing the FAFSA that you know that your answers to the questions and you've got the documentation for them. So next steps, what happens now? You want to watch after you've completed the FAFSA, as we just mentioned, start watching for communication from the financial aid office at the colleges that you sent your FAFSA to. On FAFSA, you can actually, it's free, remember, you can include up to 10 colleges and universities on your first application. You might be selected for something called verification. If you are the college, your, your FAFSA was selected in the process but the college is going to be required to receive additional documentation from you to match up with your FAFSA. This would be generally things like a copy of your 2020 tax return and some other documentation like that normally. There may be other additional requirements that the college needs, and so again, you need to be watching for communications from your college financial aid office, and you want to make sure that you complete all those additional requirements early because again, remember, we want you to be on campus enjoying your freshman experience, not in our office in August. So please get all of that done early. Um, you can contact the financial aid office early with any questions. If you're emailing, please include your assigned college ID number in your email so we can look you up pretty quickly. And as soon as you are assigned access to your college email address, please use it to do all of your communication. All of the communication needs to really come from the student, not the parent. So the student needs to be the initiator of all of those uh, questions. Now parents, you can be in the background telling them what you want to find out, but let them be the ones that ask the questions. And then finally, Something I want to call your attention to is confirm your residency status 
early after you've submitted your admissions applications. Residency is determined based on how you answer questions on the form. At GGC, we use an admissions application form that is actually designed by the University System of Georgia. I don't know what's on there, but something is on there that we have got a ton of Georgia residents that answer it wrong, and they are classified as out of state. That adds a ton of money to your charges, and a lot of these students don't recognize that until they show up at fee payment time. So please, wherever you're going, make sure that your information has been recorded accurately and that your residency is classified correctly. Also with next steps, we only will make an award offer, and this is true at any of your colleges, to those students that are accepted for admissions. And that's another plug to you to make sure you're getting all of your admissions information completed and in early so that you can be accepted. Please know your charges. Understand what the tuition and fees charges are. There's mandatory fees at every college, and yes, you've got to pay them. Um, there are also fees for specific classes, like if you've got a science class, you may have a lab fee. Know the difference between your tuition and mandatory fees and what you're being charged for room and board or housing and meal plan, whatever you want to call it, because your housing will add a significant increase to your charges, and you just need to be prepared for that and know how you plan to handle that. Are you going to take out a parent loan? Are you going to pay for that out of pocket? Um, are your student loans going to be able to cover that? Those are conversations that you may want to start having with the student now so that everybody is comfortable with what the family contribution is going to be and so that you can also understand what you're looking at as you're visiting colleges or looking on their websites for more information about what their charges will be. And again, I want to encourage the students to be the one to initiate contact with colleges. There is something called FERPA, which is basically your Privacy Act that um, rules over higher education. And once we get those students, we really cannot talk to the parent. We can talk to the parent if the student is with you. If the, parent, if the student signs a FERPA agreement, we will talk to the parent if we can validate who you are, which means pretty much you have to be coming into our office in person because we can't validate who you are if you email us and we can't validate who you are if you call us. So just be getting familiar with the idea that the student needs to initiate the questions that you can work together to determine what you want those questions to be. So maintaining financial aid eligibility. First of all, remember, apply for the FAFSA every year. It opens October 1 of every year. You're just starting this journey. You're getting ready to do your first one. You've got at least four more years of that coming, or three more years of that coming your way. Um, have your financial aid in place uh, in time, or pay out of pocket in time to meet whatever the school's fee payment deadline is, so that you're not having your classes dropped for non-payment. Students, attend all classes. I know there's some kind of thing out there about, oh, I'm in college now. I can go to class whenever I want to. No, you can't. We are going to actually look at attendance. That's how we know that you are not a no-show where we start dropping your aid eligibility. Uh, it is also how, what are the ways that you maintain academic success? If you don't go to class, you're not going to do well in the classes. We want you to do well. Pay attention to drop um, ad deadlines and also withdrawal dates. They are two different things, and they do affect your financial aid differently. And finally, please study, seek tutoring, do whatever it takes to be academically successful. If you're academically successful and you do your fast on time each year, you won't have trouble maintaining your aid eligibility, but it is up to you to do that, and there's a lot of help out there, but you gotta ask for it. So what can you actually do right now? FAFSA is not open yet, it opens October 1. You can go ahead and create those FSA IDs. Uh, you can get that done in place, and then you're ready to just log into that FAFSA and work on it once October 1st happens. 
submit those college admissions applications now. Narrow down where you want to go and get those admissions applications submitted along with ordering a partial transcript right now or anything else that you can do to kind of finalize those admissions requirements. Gather together your 2020 tax documents uh, because you want to have those handy for the FAFSA. And again, a plug, if you haven't finished your FAFSA, I believe October 26th is the FAFSA help day or help night here. Please plan to come. Look for that advertisement and plan to come because we will walk you through everything on the FAFSA deal. And then make sure you know the admissions and the financial aid and scholarship deadlines at every college that you're applying to so that you don't miss something very important. And we are going to have questions for every, uh, for all of us in just a minute, so I'm going to turn this over to my friend Pat. Everybody smile. My boss says I gotta have proof that I went to work. general requirements. These are the general requirements. Like federal students, if you're a male, you have to register for selective service. When you fill out GSF apps, they give you an option to submit one and done. Back in the old days, we had to show up at the post office. Didn't that right, fellas? Older fellas. Now you can do it on the FAFSA. It's not a commitment that you're going into the military, but if you want federal aid, state aid, you have to register for selective service. We live in the most diverse school district in the state of Georgia. Some of you are U.S. citizens, political asylees. Some of you are what they call H-1 visas, work visas. Can you qualify for federal aid or state aid? Not yet. But if you're applying for a green card, political asylee, you can apply for federal aid and state aid. Keep that in mind. Everybody's situation is different. And of course, these other programs show that you are a state residency and apply to an accredited school. So let's start with Hope Scholarship. Same requirements, 3.0, 9th through 12th grade. I can't emphasize this enough. It begins in the ninth grade. Every grade you make, starting from the ninth grade on, will count. And all math, science, English, social studies, and foreign language. That's what we look at. We don't take all extra curriculum. 9th through 12th grade. If you take three years of foreign language, we're going to count three years of foreign language. You make an F and repeat it, we're going to count that F. But do repeat it. Four, four academic rigor classes. You've got four years to take four classes of academic rigor. What are they? They can be AP classes, IB classes, dual enrollment. They can be trigonometry, physics, just to name a few foreign language, two or higher. You can get this probably done way before your senior year rolls around. These classes are listed on gafutures.org. You're going to hear that website several times, gafutures.org. Now that you got hope, you got to maintain it. A 3.0 at the end of every 30 college credit hours. Hope's only going to pay for 127 hours. What do you say if you don't like the professor or the like it? 
you drop that class, guess what? That class is going to count toward that 127 attempted hours. So the courses that you pick, pick wisely. But I got some good news. If you're dual enrollment, AP classes, IB classes, college credit before high school, that, those courses do not count toward the 127 attempted hours. Why? They're not funded through the law. So here's some good news. You got 10 AP classes, you got two wonderful choices. Graduate a year early, or you can take 10 more classes beyond the 127 hours, especially if you're in a medical field of engineering, it gives you some wiggle room. Did you know that? Well, now you know that. So you can lose hope and get it at one time. You got hope coming out of high school. But at the end of that freshman year, you're at a 2.9. What's going to happen that sophomore year? You lose hope. Pull it back to a 3.0. Understand, you'll get it back in your junior year. But you can only lose hope and gain it back one time. Keep that in mind. Zell Miller Scholarship. How do you get Zell Miller Scholarship? You're the valedictorian or salutatorian. Only one valedictorian or one salutatorian. That's one way. The other way is have a 3.7 GPA with a 1,200 on the SAT or a 26 on the ACT. Now, please understand, we need a copy of your SAT and ACT score for Zell Miller. How do you send it? If you go to gafutures.org, click on the Hope and State Aid link, click on Hope and Zell Miller Scholarships, scroll down, Student Document Upload, whether it's ACT or SAT, you can send it that way. We need that for Zell Miller. Keep in mind, and you can take it, like Mr. McGuire said, more than one time. We'll take the high score. So we do need that for Zell Miller, because you don't know how many phone calls we get during the summer. I'm at Georgia Southern, and they're going to drop my classes because Zell Miller didn't show up. Well, did you send your SATs or ACTs? Their silence. So do it right away. You don't want to be caught in that situation where you're at school and your kids are hundreds of miles away and there's a balance. That should be, we want you to be ahead of that curve. Wait a minute. My apologies. I got to work cell phone and don't work. Anyway, uh, so another way is 3.7 or a 26 on the ACT or a 1200 on the SAT for Zell Bill. Now, we don't, we, we take it as is. We don't add points to any uh, regular honors classes, regular classes. We do add a point five to all AP, IB, and dual enrollment classes on a 4.0 scale. You make a uh, 85 and you get 10 points, it's a 95, it may be an, e, an A, but it's still a B to us. But we'll give a 0.5 up to a B, so it'll be a 3.5. We don't do an A because that's the highest value. How do you maintain Zell Miller? You gotta have a 3.3 GPA every 30 college credit hours. Just like Hope, keep in mind, you can get hope after high school if you didn't come in, coming out of high school. But Zell Miller, you got to earn it while you're in high school. What if you got a three? What if you got a three point one? What's going to happen in the end of that freshman year? Guess what? You're going to go from full tuition at a state school to partial tuition, sixty to eighty to ninety percent. You'll get you might have lost Zell Miller, but you got hope. Everybody follow me? Pull it back to a three point three. You'll get it back in your junior year but you can only lose it and gain it back one time. So how do you lose it all together? You don't maintain the 3.0 or the 3.3 for Zell Miller. You've exceeded 127 attempted hours. You've got 10 years, it was seven years, you've got 10 years from the time you graduate high school to take advantage of the Hope Scholarship and Zell Miller program. Otherwise it runs out. You want to see the world? See the world. Uh, is there an exception to this? If you join the military, they will extend it, extend it from the time you get out of the military. But take advantage of it. You've got a 10-year window. Or when you earn your first professional, your bachelor's degree, then uh, that's how it's no longer an access. 
Now let's talk about state schools, technical colleges. Hope Green is for certificate and diploma programs. There's no GPA requirement. There's no education requirement. There's no, no test scores requirements to get it. You just have to apply. But you have to maintain a 2.0 in every 30 and 60 semester credit hours. Hope Grant is only going to pay up to 63 attempted hours, whereas Hope Scholarship will pay up to 127 attempted hours. This is for certificate and diploma programs. It'll cover the 70 to 75 senior tuition, which is not a bad deal, is it? And you're going to earn more than a trade. You're going to earn a living because they've got some great programs. Now, it gets better. Suppose you're passionate about what you do. You're a cosmetologist and you love what you do, or you're studying it big. You get the Hope Grant that first semester. What if you maintain a 3.5? Zell Miller Grant's gonna take the place of Hope Scholarship. Every semester you maintain a 3.5, that's gonna cover full tuition. Isn't that nice? It'll check it every semester, 3.5. So you've gone from Hope Grant to Zell Miller. So what does all of this pay for? Okay, for Hope Scholarship, a portion of your tuition in state schools. In private schools, full standard tuition. At, I mean, I'm sorry, at uh, Zell Miller, it's a uh, full standard tuition for state colleges. For private colleges, it's around $2,156 per semester at private colleges for Hope Scholarship. Zell Miller is $2,808. We, we also illustrated the quarter system with all the schools now on the semester system. And then also for the Hope Grant A portions, about 70 to 75%. Now it gets better. You got Hope Grant, Zell Miller Grant. Guess what? We're going to give you more money if you, click, if you pick one of these programs. She talked about movie and set design. We are the Hollywood of the South. They're building two, I think there's one in Covington, there's one in the Pineland, in the Fayetteville. Matter of fact, just south of the location of the Walking Dance in Noah, Georgia. Uh, but these are great programs, and they're going to give you money if you get accepted into them, money on top of money. So think about it. This is opportunity out here called the Hope Career Grant. And this gives you uh, what they give you on top of that as far as the Hope Career Grant. Now, how do you apply? When do you apply? We talked about how to when do you apply? If you're a senior, you apply today. I say this out of love and respect. Helicopter mamas out there, leave the GSF apps alone. Let Junior fill this out. Let them have some skin in the game. Let them have responsibility. Don't create that, that, that GA Futures account for them. Let them do it. Because they're, they're part of this plan also. I don't know how many calls I've received from parents. I'm doing my son's GA Futures account. Let them be responsible, but get behind them. Uh, GSF apps, you can fill that out now. Why do we give you a second way to apply for hope? If parents have not filed taxes, extension on their taxes, why should a, a student be penalized for not receiving state aid? Fill out GSF apps, it's good for 10 years. It only takes 20 minutes. You fill it out, you don't have to apply for hope, Zell Miller anymore. What's that lawyer on TV say? One call does it all, one application does it all. You can do it tonight when you get home. This is our state applications. You go on gafutures.org, let me back up. You go on GA Futures, you go to Hope and State Aid Programs, click on State Applications tab, click on GSF Apps at the top, identify which program you want, submit it, you've applied. But definitely fill out the FAFSA every year. This is GA Futures. And what all it entails is your one-stop shop for, for college research, in-state, out-of-state, scholarships, you name it. Now let's talk about scholarships, not near and dear to my heart. She pointed out there's all types of scholarships. I want you to look in the mirror. October 31st deadline for the Coca-Cola Minority Scholarship. Hispanic Scholarship Fund. Boy Sutta Scholarship, which you check with your financial aid offices. There's something for everybody. Tall people, TCI, Tall Club International. Males six foot two, females five foot ten. 
There are 50 chapters across the United States. Join one of them. You might have to write an essay. It's a thousand dollars for being God. But that's not fair. How about those short folks? Four foot ten to four foot eleven. LPA.com. Little people of America.com. Two hundred fifty to seven hundred fifty dollars. This is my all-time favorite. Prom's going to be coming up fairly soon. Make that prom just out of duct tape. Ladies, don't run me out of here, but just hear me out. I'm saving you money on a two to $500 prom dress. Make it out of duct tape. Stuck in the prom or a duct tape brand company. Get your gentleman to make his suit out of duct tape. Submit a picture during, before, after the prom. Oh, I got a great outlet. Y'all ready for some good news? You can not bring your backup dress, but take pictures, submit it to the duct tape brand company. It's $5,000 a piece. A couple went in Cartersville, he went to Emory, got Zell Miller, got 5,000 on top of that. His date went to Chattanooga Tech, got the whole grant, got 5,000 on top of that. These are legitimate scholarships. Now, what if I'm not tall? What if I'm not short? Get a job. <laughs> I love this story. What do we have in Gwinnett County? We have a racetrack and foot trip on every corner. Racetrack on 316 in Sugarloaf. I stopped and got gas. Talked to a student from UGA. He says, $2,000 per semester on top of my pay toward my education. You hear that? More companies are doing what Chick-fil-A has been doing for years. I said, if that's the case, what will racetrack give me? Racetrack said, after 500 hours of employment, they provide. The, the financial aid office at University of North Georgia said Burger King is sending $1,000 for working at Burger King. Dunkin' Donuts, my all-time favorite, they give out tuition assistance. Publix, just to name a few. So when you're looking for summer jobs or look for jobs in general, see if they provide tuition assistance. These are just some that I've collected. And then where do you find the scholarships? You cap outside Ms. Kelly Bonnerpool's office. All that information is going to our office. This is a great resource, folks, in your community. Community-based scholarships, apply. You'd be surprised how much money is being left on the table that students do not apply. How many of y'all are a member of the PTSA Association here at your high school? What is it, two to three $1,000 scholarships? At one high school, 600 in the graduation class, only four seniors apply. Four seniors and two walk away with a $1,000 scholarship apiece. I told that at North Cross High School, and they said during the parent night, yeah, only 18 applied here. Not everybody's applying, folks. Apply. GA Futures has a scholarship search. Specify to you. What is your major? What do you want to major in? What is it? Community service. This will give you pages of scholarships, and this is free. This should only cost you time and effort. Free websites. Don't, if they ask for a credit card, go away from it. <laughs> go for free websites that will provide you lots of scholarships. Yes, it takes time and effort. Well, why not apply? But if you want to narrow down the search, apply through your high school, apply through your community. Then go to the college websites and look at them. Sign, find out what the deadlines are for the schools that you're interested in. There may be scholarship days. Oglethorpe University, Piedmont College, and now Piedmont University, they provide scholarship days. Visit Talk to their admissions office. There's going to be a pro fair, about three pro fairs here in the fall, college fairs. Attend one of them, juniors and seniors and parents. Get to know the name of the face of the admissions office about scholarships, collect information. They are doing a thorough program in Gwinnett County. We have, we have an army of volunteers. On the FAFSA night we have here, we've had folks who have come from UGA. We have uh, Georgia Gwinnett College. We've had North Georgia College. Kennesaw. Kennesaw is how the representative that lives here in Gwinnett County. So these folks are coming out to help you fill out your FAFSA for free. So keep that in mind. Now I've talked a lot about scholarships and ran through Hope Scholarship. See that distinguished gentleman there in the purple at the bottom? That is me. That means I'm probably the only one who gets senior citizen discount at Waffle Houses. But that's all right. If you need to contact us, we're, 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 we're across the state. I live here in your community. I live in Lawrenceville. We'll be happy to, uh, like I said, if you have questions on financial aid, state aid, that's what we're here for.
So without further ado, thank you for your time and we'll take questions. Okay, that's it. So um, we're going to be hanging out up here if anybody has questions. Um, well, does anybody have a question that you would consider like for the good of the group that would be good for everybody? What you got? It is suggested that you that you apply for both that you apply in both places. The, she said you have to do both the FAFSA and the GSF apps. The, no, you don't. But it's suggested that you do both. Anybody else got a good of the group type of thing? Okay. Well, we wait. Okay. Yeah. Hey, what you got? So did you say your kid's going to go out of state and you want to know if we have recommendations for how to finance an out of state situation? Is that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I have recommendations. <laughs> I mean, there's a million of them, but I, I would say the first would start with look at, and you guys told me too, a -based, or, um, uh, your, your need-based scholarships and your academic-based scholarships. If the student qualifies for um, a scholarship based on the GPA, for example, I believe it's Mississippi State and Ole Miss, they'll let you double dip in the scholarships. So if, your student if your student qualifies for a, G uh, um, a scholarship at 3.0, let's say they have a 3.7, they can get that 5,000 for 3.0 and another 5,000 because they have a 3.5 or higher. So these are questions that you would ask the school. I would visit the school's webpage, I would talk to the financial aid office there, I would treat looking for a scholarship like a part-time job for your kiddo. I would challenge them to apply to two scholarships every week until they graduate. Academic common market. Oh, that's right. Academic common market. So the academic common market is um, if a student can find a major at a university that participates in the academic common market that is not offered here in the state of Georgia, they can get in-state tuition at that out-of-state school. So academic common market. Just Google it. You'll get all the information. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Okay, October 1st is FAFSA, the FAFSA application opens. The night that we're inviting folks in here to help, for, for help is October 26th. October 26th, excuse me. Okay, well we're going to be hanging out down here if anybody wants to come down one-on-one, -on -one, but we appreciate you guys so much. Call your counselors, call anybody you need.